Welcome into Wager Talk TV. I am Drew Martin, joined by Tony Finn and Robbie Vino of wagertalk.com. Guys, we're talking a uh, little bit of a, a border rivalry here, Tony. We get the Virginia yeah. Tech Hokies and uh, West Virginia here, the Mountaineers, minus two and a half, minus three point favorites, depending where we're shopping as we're talking down. A, a key number in football, 50 and a half being the total. West Virginia as the home team, the short home favorite. You interested in getting involved here, Tony? I, you know, I, I thought I was going to get interested in being involved in this game until I, I saw the line. And I was a little bit, and I shouldn't be surprised, but uh, West Virginia wasn't very good in week one uh, against Maryland. They had plenty of opportunities to put away Maryland and win that game, and they were they, they really disappointed. Um, they're better defensively than they were against Maryland. Last week's game was a little bit of a, a rebound, et cetera. But I listen, I have a hard time with this game being anything more than a pick em, or maybe even VT uh, being a road favorite. And that may sound strange, but uh, I don't think it's an overreaction. Um, what they did to North Carolina, a, a team that was one of the best offensive teams on the planet last year. And, and I guess as, as well as Mac Brown has done in his two years back with, NC, with, with the Tar Heels, that there was no place to go but down, right? But but I like VT here. I really like VT here. I, I, I'm going to reiterate this. I think the PAC, the Big 12, is overrated. And the only team worth their salt is Oklahoma. Uh, TCU's improved. Listen, I like the direction West Virginia's going, but I don't, I don't think they're dynamic enough offensively right now. They'll hang around in games defensively. But I like the balance of VT and – while I want to, I want to jump out there and, and and be on Virginia Tech here in this rivalry, a, a rivalry that hasn't happened in quite some time. So it's going to be a lot of fun for those all those fans on Saturday morning. And I'm going to take the under in this game as opposed to choosing a side. I think both teams. I think again, West Virginia's challenged offensively. I don't think they're diming at all, and but they're good enough defensively to stay in this game. And I think it's a low-scoring game. Last, the team that makes the fewest mistakes will do. Will be a, you know, we'll we'll, we'll use that uh, that old that old uh, boring saying: don't make mistakes, win the game. The team that makes the fewest mistakes between West Virginia and Virginia Tech wins this game in a low-scoring affair on the Eastern Seaboard. Give me the under. All right. We can get it at 50 and a half as we're talking right now. Robbie, coming to yeah. you next. You know, Neil Brown here for West Virginia. He did some uh, good things there in Southern Alabama, talking about his time with the Troy Trojans. And at times, he, he did run a slow offense. At, at Sometimes he would kind of speed it up, up-tempo, and then sometimes he would slow it down. Unfortunately, I learned about that the hard way, betting some overs <laughs> with the Troy Trojans, and they didn't always hit. I can see what right. Tony's going, you know, a defensive battle, a little regional rivalry game here. What do you think in Virginia Tech, West Virginia? Yeah, the first two weeks worth of game results and statistics would probably lead you that way, Drew, for sure. I, I'll say this. We're going to find out what West, or excuse me, what Virginia Tech is. This is going to be their first game outside of Blacksburg. I mean, nobody's going to be playing at their Sandman. Nobody's going to be cheering for them in Morgantown, one of the toughest places to play in college football. Um this team, Virginia Tech, you know, they beat North Carolina. They beat Middle Tennessee. They covered both games. But there's a huge question mark for me next to those. You know, they're minus 58 total yards in total yardage against UNC. And they were minus almost two yards per carry at the line of scrimmage. Uh, North Carolina gained 4.9 per carry. Virginia Tech only gained 3.0. Nearly a two-yard difference. And that includes, you know, in college, they throw sack yardage into your rushing total. North Carolina had 32 yards worth of sacks tossed into their number, and they still won the line of scrimmage by two yards. So, to me, that's a little bit concerning. Last week, they win by 21 against Middle Tennessee, but they only outgained them by 34 yards. Some of this stuff seems to be a bit of a mirage in home field taking place here for Virginia Tech. It's a team that... You know, when we look at it, North Carolina, they're an improved defense. I'll give them that. 
Middle Tennessee is not a good defense. Neither one's really a, an above average defense. And yet Virginia Tech's only been able to average 339 and a half yards per game against those two teams on their home field. Now they have to go on the road against a really good defensive team. I don't know what to expect from their offense. When you look at how they're getting it done, it's kind of unconventional ways. You mine through their statistics and you find out they're converting third downs, 52%. That's a good number. They're getting to the quarterback. They've got nine quarterbacks sacked. Six of those came against UNC. And they're only allowing a point every 29.3 yards gained against them. You know, they're up, their first two opponents, guys, they've had 21 possessions against the Virginia Tech defense. But 11 of those have crossed midfield and into Virginia Tech territory. The thing is, it's kind of a bend-but-don't-break style that they've been successful with so far. They've only allowed 24 points on all 11 of those drives. We'll see if they can get it done on the road here against West Virginia. As Tony mentioned in their season opener against Maryland, which is a very explosive team. Virginia Tech is not all that explosive so far. Maryland is. Um, Virginia Tech goes out and scores three TDs on their first four possessions. And then <laughs> they turn it over on two of their last three. And on the other one, they settle for a field goal and wind up losing that game. Again, as Tony mentioned, they had plenty of chances to win that game. Turnovers really hurt them in that one. Otherwise, they would have walked away with a win. This Virginia Tech offense on the road, again, I have my questions. Ever since their first three drives of the year, which all resulted in scores against UNC, 15 of their last 19 drives, haven't gained more than 36 yards. And again, that's Middle Tennessee and North Carolina. Can they take advantage of the West Virginia secondary that was hit pretty hard by Maryland? I don't think they can. West Virginia's got, they're kind of mirror images. They both have, West Virginia's got difficulty running the football. They're both really good run defenses. Whoever can throw the ball best, I think, wins this game. Whoever can protect their quarterback wins this game. But I'm going to lean to the home team here, Drew. West Virginia at home in Morgantown as a home favorite the last three years. They're eight and three against the number. So give me West Virginia minus the small price. Two and a half, obviously, way better than three. Um, but I would I would lean with West Virginia in this game. I like it, Robbie. Eight of 11 at home as the ATS favorite. He's uh, Robbie Vino. Check him out at wagertalk.com along with Tony Finn. And guys, also remember $2 Tuesdays at wagertalk.com. Each and every Tuesday, top handicappers, top play discounted to just $2. Check it out, wagertalk.com.